Hello, hello. Day 189 of From Here to Jerusalem. Yesterday I had another break. Uh, I am a few kilometers before Linz along the Danube on the what they call the Treppel Wake. And of course, Treppel Wakes are uh, the old roads where the horses would have pulled the boats up and down uh, the river. So here I am. It is unbelievably beautiful weather. Yesterday it was a bit rainy, a bit misty, uh, and I didn't walk, and I'll tell you why in a little while. Uh, yeah, it'll stay this beautiful for the next six or seven days. So there is an opportunity here for me to really make a bit of headway. Uh, today I'm heading for Linz and I'll probably stop at Mauthausen. Uh, Mauthausen, of course, is unfortunately best known for its Second World War history and the concentration camp that was there. Um, yeah, I'm being looked after. The sun is shining. There's no wind. It's about 18, 19 degrees. I don't have to carry my full pack. As you can see, I'm not carrying my sleeping bag. Uh, apart from the harp, and the things that I need in my side bags. One and two. Huh? It is just me and the harp today. Uh, so I had stayed in Cremassau with Joe for three days, who really helped me settle in, into Austria and uh, learned a few things. We had loads of chats. I got used to the accent. Uh, it was wonderful, but then uh, after the Slögene Schlinge, it was time for me to move on and head towards Lint. Now, I don't know if you remember, but just outside of Athai, I met an old man who told me about another guy with a big pack, who he had said at the time was on his way to China. And of course, that wasn't the case. It was Johannes Maria Schwarz, who is an Austrian priest who lives as a hermit on the border of Italy and France. And he was on his way to walk the Via Columbanus, which I had heard about when I crossed the Po in 2018 uh, from the ferryman, Danny. So here we are, we're on our way, and uh, uh, I've, I made it to uh, Puchenau, where Johannes' parents live, and he had said that I could stay and rest at his parents' house. Hello. Hello. So I did. I, I called. Them. I called them. The mother came and picked me up, and uh, I met one of his sisters. Uh, they gave me a room, fed me, watered me. One happy, happy, clappy pilgrim, yeah. And uh, but, and they kind of said, you know. I can stay as long as I want, but the weather is calling. Like I've become acutely aware of it being autumn. I mean, look at look at all the leaves. Most of the trees are now uh, only half full of leaves. And I was reading Johannes's diary, which he uh, which he wrote uh, during his trip to Jerusalem in 2013. Uh, he made a, a big loop to go to Jerusalem and then back um, over five months. Of course, he walked like enormous distances, like anything, anywhere from, I think the shortest distances were something like 17 kilometers and the longest one was 75 kilometers on a day. Uh, I'm, I don't walk any, any of those distances, but we, we agreed already during this time. Hello. That... Uh, it's of course, if you've got the time, it's about the begegnung and about who we meet and the relationships we create along the way, the lessons that we learn. Uh, so I'm really grateful for having met him and really grateful that I can be here with his family. Um, his mother will come and pick me up later uh, when I arrive around anywhere between four and five this afternoon. Uh, for as far as I can get. Uh, yeah, the Danube, there is not the high 
the high mountains around again, like it's pretty low. And uh, now everywhere, and the triple wake, I can follow it. And if not on the triple wake, I can be back on the bicycle path. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so, huh, Austrian food is good. Uh, Austrian food is good. Uh, Johannes. Yeah, so I was reading, reading his diary. It's got a fantastic title, yeah? Uh, diary of a Jerusalem pilgrim. Uh, the <laughs> uh, 14,000 kilometers, uh, 14,000 dogs, one priest. Uh, Johannes is like young, he's 44. Uh, very, uh, he made a big impression on me. Like if, if priests like him are the future of the church, then there is hope. And of course, my big thing is hope. Like my entire, uh, my entire goal is to feel good, not, not in control, but to feel at peace with the world that we live in and uh, be in the world rather than trying to constantly shape it and be slave to the systems that we have in our communities, in our societies. We are free. We are souls that need both experiences uh, as well as relationships towards other people and the world that we live in. Uh, what is really important? Is it the car that we drive, the house that we live in, or is it the life that we live? And um, you know, those are the questions I ask myself every day. And that's what I walk for. This, to me, is really what it's all about. <laughs> that is what is important to me. Uh, that's why I come out here to see this and have the experience of this. A late summer in autumn, uh, having the feeling that I'm cared for and loved even without uh, participating in the economic process in the normal way, but by carrying a harp around, sharing the music and the, sh and the stories. And, you know, I have no great expectations as to what, what it is that I need. I don't need a hairdryer. <laughs> I don't need underfloor heating. I don't even need a bed, really, because I've got a sleeping bag and a sleeping mat. And I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be and to meet and to try and to see. Uh, and now in the eastern part of Europe, even more so. Like, I, I doubt every day I've been getting up in the mornings very worried about what's going to happen next. Um, there are, of course, uh, things that are happening back home that are not easy. Uh, I've got a, a cousin who really isn't well and I'm starting to think I might never get to see her again. No, these things are not... So, as the Germans say, it's not einfach. It's not light. It's not light to carry and it's not simple. Uh, but I'm at peace because I've got the harp. I've got... I've got uh, my stick. You know, and Jerry... Jerry's maker has also been struggling and these people are near and dear to me. But on the other hand, that's why I'm out here as well. Those relationships are so important and uh, there's so much love there that I can be here today on the Danube, uh, along that Danube, which really isn't green. Now, Joe, uh, Joe has been playing with the idea of jo joining me. He, uh, he's going away for the weekend to do a photo shoot uh, somewhere. I, his, his accent was pretty serious, so I couldn't understand all of what he was saying. Um, but uh, I'm here and he's back in Kremassau and it was wonderful uh, having, having that help and that support. And uh, I hope our roads will cross again. And who knows, he might join me for a little bit to, to walk 
uh, a little bit of the way uh, as Otto Claire had kind of suggested to him that he should drop everything and just come along. I don't think that'll happen but that's another household where I know that if I if I need to go back I can go back and be there if I need to. Now so tomorrow I'll be walking from Mauthausen onwards and then I end up in the area where Johannes, the next Johannes, comes from uh, Aschauer. Johannes Aschauer is the other pilgrim, so yeah, Johannes Schwartz had met uh, David, who was the third one of those three pilgrims that went on the pilgrim journey in 2010 from, uh, from Austria to Jerusalem to try and set out the Jerusalem way, a way of peace, peace, justice and equality. And uh, like I said in, I believe, the, the last video, that of course was a big goal. He's still working on it. Uh, I believe last year they went on parts, redid parts of their journey. Uh, I see the stickers from time to time because they of course followed the Danube, just like myself, just like the Romans, just like anybody who's got a bit of brain, you know, Winter is coming, that's the other thing. It's in my head the whole time. I've never walked in winter. Uh, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm out of my depth. Like I really am out of my depth here and it scares the bejesus out of me. It really is scary. Uh, but I'm here, I made it this far. I will make the best of what I'm given. I'm grateful for every day that I can walk, uh, but I'll definitely need help. Like, uh, I'm not sure, you know, what kind of support I need. That, that's the other thing. You know, I've in, in, in the beginning, I thought a bit of financial support would have been nice and lots of people came and helped and uh, I've been taken care of so far and now I have to dig deep and you know hold on to this feeling of uh, that I'm on the right road doing the right thing so here we are I've got another 15 20 kilometers to do today uh, the weather is beautiful the Danube is just so impress impressive and yeah tomorrow will be Another day, tonight I will be uh, again in, uh, with Johannes' parents. I'll read a bit more out of the diary that he wrote. And uh, thank you for being here with me. You're the wind under my wings. Hello. I couldn't do this without the prayers and the support and uh, the thoughts of, uh, thoughts, the belief of people that I can do it. All of it helps. You know, I can do with every angel, every prayer, every candle, every well-wisher. So with that, have a look at this and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.